Welcome to episode 104. There is no better time than right now to plan your vacation getaway. Don't have the time to plan? Use the friendly travel agents at 3D Travel Company by going to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and clicking the Book Now button today on the left-hand side. Hurry and plan your trip today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest is a character designer, an animator, and sometime voice actor as well. Today, we're going to focus on the artwork that he has done, along with the background art, the character designs, and so much more from wonderful shows like Tailspin, Bonkers, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Stay tuned for an amazing interview with today's special guest. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, I am super excited to be bringing you an interview with Lynn Smith, the animator and creator of some amazing projects throughout his career. Uh, Lynn, welcome to the show. Hi, Trenton. Thanks for having me. Hey, you are more than welcome, sir. Well, I'm glad I was able to grab you for a little bit of time here on this Saturday afternoon. And, uh, you know, the very first thing we like to do, Lynn, when we have a guest on the show is to get to know them. So tell me about little Lynn Smith, the young boy that grew into the man he became. And how did he get into animation? Actually, uh, you know, my first memory, I, I don't think it was even a year old, was watching my dad paint the Looney Tune characters on my nursery wall. Oh, wow. So... Yeah, my dad uh, had a scholarship to Chenard's, wow. which was the art, the art school Yeah, um, back in the 60s, 50s, 60s. Um, it was the CalArts, before CalArts. <laughs> and uh, so he had a, a scholarship there. He, he didn't uh, use a scholarship. He became a carpenter. Oh, wow. But uh, I used to sit at the table and watch him draw. And that was my first exposure to, to drawing and the characters and stuff. So, wow. Yeah. That is fantastic. Such a young memory and uh, such an inspiration to you. Yeah, such a young age. That's fantastic to hear that. It's kind of a legacy you carried on through your father. That's wonderful. Well, it started from the beginning. I was drawn, drawn to it <laughs> from, the, from the beginning. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. Drawn to it. Well, uh, Lynn, it's, uh, we're off to a great start. You know, uh, it's wonderful to hear that, you know, your father was such an inspiration to you in that, uh, regards. Were there other things as you were growing up, uh, cartoons or certain maybe characters that really spoke to you as a kid that kind of were like, wow, man, you know, animation is really something that I'm, I'm drawn to. <laughs> I, uh, well, I grew up on, you know, when Saturday morning cartoons were huge, yeah. you know, it's, uh, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, oh, yeah. um, all, mostly the Hanna-Barbera stuff, which was on TV and, uh, you know, Beanie and Cecil and, uh, all these classics. Oh yeah. So for me, I grew up at the best time to, <laughs> to see all these great cartoons, um, when the Flintstones was on, my grandpa actually worked in a quarry, in a oh. rock quarry. So he loved watching the Flintstones. Oh, There's so many ties to animation for me that I don't, I'm just realizing. Yeah. But I used to sit on my grandpa's lap and watch the Flintstones because he, he worked in a quarry. Oh, wow. So uh, I was just surrounded by it. it. And it was never a thing. Yeah, it was never a thing. For, you know, why are you watching that? Why, you turn that off. It was always appreciated in my house. That's awesome when it's encouraged like that. And, you know, it really does kind of help build the uh, the fundamentals of what created the man that we have today who's gotten into animation and done some amazing works. Um, you know, we're going to dive into some of the shows you worked on. The very first one that I see you have credited, and I believe is your first work uh, officially, was The Snorks. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, the Snorks was a very cute show. I absolutely love their theme song, and uh, it's a show that if you don't know, you need to check it out. It's called Snorks, S-N-O-R-K-S. <laughs> I think it's on Hulu or someplace. It may be. So many of these shows have been brought back, and it's been wonderful to get to uh, to re-watch some of these shows for sure. What was your role in that production when you were working on Snorks, Lynn? Well, actually, I, I was working at Hanna-Barbera at the time. That's where it was produced. Oh, wow. And I was hired to do development. Well, there wasn't always a development project, so they put me on snorks and taught me how to do background layout 
So I worked with uh, William Frake, who will come into the story later, but he taught me how to do background layout. But my very first job, I was doing development art, character design, background layout, and I, I didn't have any prior experience, so I was learning it all on the job. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, again, everything just fell into place. And I don't know if you want to hear the story about how I got hired there. But please, yeah, please tell us, Lynn, yeah. Like I say, I didn't have any uh, previous experience. I didn't go to art school or anything. I just walked, I made a phone call, made an appointment, and uh, they agreed to see me <laughs> for an interview. That's awesome. But I, I walked in with all the stuff I had drawn in high school when I wasn't paying attention in school. <laughs> so, That's awesome. I got uh, Harry Love, who was a director on the original Tom and Jerry oh, cartoons, wow. the yeah. 1940s. At this time, he was maybe in his late 60s. Okay. He, fl- he flips through my portfolio, and uh, he looks at me after a couple minutes, and he says, you drew these? I said, yeah. He said, wait here. <laughs> and he left, for, he, said, he left the office, and about 10 minutes later, he came back, and he said, can you start today? <laughs> wow. Yes, I could yes, I could definitely start today. Wow. And I've been working for over thirty years since. Lynn, that's that's amazing, man. I mean, especially with no uh, you know, formal schooling in that regards, uh, to just come in and then, you know, him to be that impressed with your works. Um, you know, sometimes the way we get our education is is differently. You know, when you're focusing on your artwork at school, uh, you know, instead of focusing on whatever the teachers were talking about, you know, you were creating this uh, you know, resume in essence of your, of your work, uh, to present, which is just fa- fascinating to me because, you know, so many times teachers will tell you, you know, focus on your work, do what we're asking, uh, you know, and in, and in your case, and, and I know a lot of other people's cases, whether it's, you know, doing funny voices and cracking jokes for voiceover or drawing art in their class, you know, sometimes the things we do on the side, uh, really do end up being the inspirations and creations of our career paths down the line. And we just don't always know it, you know? That's true. Yeah. I, I had an I had an English teacher that I drew a caricature of. <laughs> and he passed he passed me in his class for three three classes. <laughs> and just before just before graduation he comes to me and he says, Don't ever tell anybody you majored in English <laughs> just just because you passed all my classes. That's funny. <laughs> wow. Well, Lynn, that is so awesome. You know, to, to get to hear your beginnings, um, you know, it's a, it's an inspiration to me, and I'm sure it will be to a lot of other people because, uh, you know, sometimes the world is very cookie cutter, and they want us to do this specific set of things, uh, and you show that you don't always have to do that to get where you're going in in, in your life and in your future. So, uh, I think that that gives me a lot of hope, gives me a lot of uh, inspiration, and, and a big smile on my face, and I think it will a lot of other people too. So. But uh, everybody else, pay attention in school. Yes, everybody pay attention in school. (laughs) But everybody's different. You know, everybody learns a little bit differently. I I struggled with dyslexia, so I understand, you know, sometimes the way we learn is just different from other people, too, you know? So, um, super fascinating. Well, you know, some other great shows that you got to work on, uh, one of them was an animated show called Pound Puppies. It's not as well known, but it was something I recall from my childhood. Uh, You know, great show, good fun, uh, very cute animation. Um, But one of the next big projects you got to work on that is very well known and people love to this day. In fact, it's one of my absolute favorites called Who Framed Roger Rabbit from 1988. Uh, What was it like getting to work on that amazing film? Well, here's where where William Frake comes back into the story. (laughs) Uh, The guy who taught me background layout was hired to head up background layout for the Toontown sequence on Roger Rabbit. And um, he called me one day and he said, do you want to be my assistant on this? (laughs) <laughs> I, I, at that time, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, you know, but I knew it was Disney features, and uh, yeah, I'll assist you. So uh, he brought me on, and again, I had only been in the business for maybe a year. Oh wow! And still didn't have you know a lot of experience. Wow! So he brought me in, and then like a week later, his wife went into labor, oh, and goodness. he disappeared. Oh no! He disappeared for like a week, <laughs> and so I'm sitting there <laughs> trying to do these uh, background layouts for this elaborate, you know, production. This is you know a feature film. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm just trying to hold on by my fingernails. I'm drawing, <laughs> and you know, uh, 
Dale Bear, who was in charge of that production unit, because a lot of the uh, live action and animated sequences were done in London okay. with Richard Williams. Oh, wow. So we just did the Toontown sequence. Uh, Dale Bear, who was in charge of that sequence, would be over my shoulder helping me out, you know, yeah. laying out the uh, the angles and things. But um, all the buildings with faces and all the personality, that was my idea. That really? It was just going to be pretty, you know, pretty standard. Yeah. But I started saying, you know, the building should have personality. This is Toontown. Everything should be alive. <laughs> And uh, and they like that. And in fact, the main shot where they have the uh, the buildings, there's a bar and there's a police station and everything. Yeah, that was just supposed to be a static shot. But they liked it so much they animated the buildings. <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah. Well, that's pretty epic. So that was you, man. You were the uh, the inspiration behind my. Uh... A huge part of my childhood because I mean I thought everything being animated in Toontown was extremely brilliant. I mean that was genius, really, because uh, you know instead of having those static shots where the buildings were just still, uh, having everything come to life was just amazing. I don't think there was anything in that scene that wasn't alive. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah. wow, that is awesome. Well, you know, another show you got to work on absolute favorite of uh absolute favorite of mine is uh, tailspin which came out in the 90s uh you know just a couple of years later um so your trend wor with working with disney has definitely continued through your career at this point um getting to work on tailspin had to be an absolute blast because it was such a fun and wild show it was um and to be asked to do character designs for that you know this is now maybe two and a half years into my career. Yeah. So I'm still, I'm still green. <laughs> still kind of awestruck. Now, still kind of wow. Yeah. I think <laughs> most of my life has been like that. That's awesome. Just hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> hanging on by the seat of your uh, seaplane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What characters did you primarily work on or did you kind of have a handle in on all of the characters? I designed Kit. Okay. Don Carnage, oh. Molly, oh, and Molly? Wildcat. Yeah, Wildcat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Jim Cummings, and because uh, he was Don Carnage, and then yeah. um, Wildcat, of course, is Pat Fraley, uh, and the young girl and Kit. They both escaped me, Molly. Uh, those two actors uh, escaped my memory. But yeah, great characters. And that's really good to know that you specifically worked on those. Don Carnage was just a hoot. Uh, absolutely yeah. loved him. <laughs> and Wildcat was such a fun guy. Um, and Kit was just a, a punky little fun sparky little guy you know he was just very uh cool i loved his little flyer disc that he would fly on behind the the seaplane and everything with blue right. but oh yeah. man and molly she was a cute little girl <laughs> great great yeah. characters well the next thing we're going to talk about today lynn is a show that has really been a huge inspiration behind the creation of my show uh called adventures in odyssey and you actually got to work on the animated series on a multitude of of them if not all of their uh, projects, but the three that really stick out to me are Star Quest from 1993. That was kind of a throwback to um, the original Star Trek with Kirk and um, Scotty and all of those uh, characters. And then you did one called Electric Christmas and Someone to Watch Over Me. And these three were really extremely special to me because number one, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I love sci-fi. Uh, the Electric Christmas because Christmas is a big thing for me. And then Someone to Watch Over Me was always a favorite of mine because it was a throwback to the Adventures in Odyssey that was done uh, where Jimmy Barkley was the character in the uh, radio drama version where he needed an, uh, a guardian angel to watch over him. I believe it was Jimmy Barkley, um, but it was a character in Odyssey on the radio drama that they then translated into an animated feature. So it just has a lot of, uh, of a special place in my heart where the young boy is injured. He has a guardian angel watching over him and he goes on all these adventures uh, in his in his mind while he's battling to uh, fight his coma in essence uh, to get back to reality and um, just a great show I mean amazing cartoons amazing animation that spawned off of the uh, radio drama and what was it like getting to work on that amazing project and series Lynn it was a lot of fun um, again it was uh, it was a smaller production it was basically two guys really uh, wow Mike, Mike Jens and Ken Johnson and they produced all those animated uh, videos. Um, 
right down to storyboarding them and directing and, and everything else. So it was nice just to work with two guys and, and be able to just create, you know, uh, these characters and very simple production. And uh, it was a lot of fun to work on. Well, even though it was a small group of people and a simple production to work on, the animation was really great. I mean, it was amazing, uh, especially in the early 90s. Uh, you know, a lot of times we see these productions that are done from Christian companies and stuff, and they aren't necessarily up to a standard of regular animation for shows like Disney and such. But, I mean, I would say that the animation and the, the characters that we saw in Adventures in Odyssey were Disney quality and beyond because it's just an amazing show the way it was created and done and voiced. So I'm glad you were a part of that amazing series. Yeah, me too. It's, uh, I'm proud of it. <laughs> you should be. It's an amazing show, a set of films, you know. Uh, I mean, it was anywhere from, I think, 10 to 12, maybe 13 uh, that had been produced. And, uh, you know, I wished it had continued on. It was a great show, great series. Um, and the radio drama just hit 30 years uh, in 2017. So it's amazing to see how how much uh, exposure this show has had on the the world, on the community of people out there today, you know, because there aren't a lot of radio dramas anymore. And I think that was a huge inspiration behind what I do today, you know, so. Great. Well, I'm so glad you got to work on Adventures in Odyssey, Lynn. It's definitely a show that inspired me and uh, is a huge reason why I do what I do today. A couple other shows I wanted to talk with you about. Again, we're going back to some Disney productions you got to work on. Amazing shows like The Little Mermaid animated TV show uh, from 92 to 93 is when that aired. Uh, Bonkers, which was a fun, fun show. A lot of people don't know about as much, uh, but it's one I highly recommend. Jim Cummings was the main character, Bonkers. And you've worked on the movie and TV show called Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2 back in 91 and The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh from 88 to 1990. And... All of those shows were really special to me in one way or another. My sister was a huge Little Mermaid fan, so I watched it a lot because she watched it. Uh, Bonkers was just extremely funny, quirky, and had a lot of that Toontown feel that we got in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And uh, was some of the characterizations in that uh, kind of reminiscent, would you say, of Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Well, they wanted to um, they wanted to explore that idea of yeah. the real cartoon characters living in the, or the cartoon characters living in a real world. Um, except that it was all animated. So, which confused me from the start. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. Cause yeah. it, it does kind of feel like they tried to have cartoons in a, in a real world, but the other characters were animated. They weren't live action characters, which I think if they had done bonkers or if they ever reboot it, they should do it where all the, you know, main characters that were supposed to be humans or real people and then have the other characters all be animated. I think that would be a cool, fun uh, rendition to make bonkers in the future if they ever do that. Well, I think now they could use actual live action. You yeah. Know, uh, you know, the technology is different than it was way too expensive to do as a, you know, as a weekly series. Yeah. Yeah. Back then. But that was that was the premise of the show. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, they tried to pitch that maybe five times to Jeffrey Katzenberg and um, they finally, they brought me on it and I did a, a more crazy 1930s take and I, I created bunkers. Oh, no um, way. <laughs> the pitch that I worked on is the one that sold to Katzenberg. Wow. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, bonkers is one of my absolute favorites. He's so zany and crazy and funny and uh, it's a cartoon I recommend to people out there who don't know it, whether you're just uh, wasn't your generation or it's just one you never caught. Please check out Bonkers. It's super funny. Uh, and Lynn, it's awesome to know that you were uh, the one that actually helped get that show off the ground and got it um, inspired, you know, inspired other people to say, hey, yeah, let's do this, you know, because that's it's a fun, fun, fun show. Um, and, you know, as far as Winnie the Pooh goes, I mean, who doesn't love Pooh Bear? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Um, getting to work on that show, what were the characters that you really got to work on on that? And what was it like working on the Christmas production uh, and the uh, the actual series itself? Well, for Pooh, actually, that was the first uh, production I worked on at Disney TV Animation. Awesome. And all the characters were already estab established, yeah. obviously, from the, you know, the 60s features and stuff. So my job on that was basically design costume changes and, and that kind of thing. Anytime, you know, Monster Frank and Pooh, um, <laughs> you know, where uh, they're all in kind of uh, gothic 
garb and yeah and that that was that was my job so <laughs> that had to be fun to take something that was already a beloved thing and uh get to you know recostume them and repurpose some oh, yeah. of that to uh to bring people's childhoods to fruition because you know i know growing up with those as a kid i think the new adventures of winnie the pooh uh aside from the originals was like probably my absolute favorite because it was when I was a kid growing up. Um, but Pooh Bear has always been super special to me. But the theme song from that series from the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh is amazing. Um, it was just a, a well put together show. And uh, they took an entity that was already beloved and just made it even more so, I think. Oh, it was awesome to play in that world. Play, <laughs> play in the Hundred Acre Woods. <laughs> it yeah. had to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know, working with that group of people uh, at Disney, I just they, they just do such such wonderful works. Uh, you know, they really uh, inspire people in so many ways. It's it's amazing. Um, you know, I, Lynn, do you have a way that people can reach out to you? A website or social media? How could people reach out to you? Whether they have questions about the animations you've worked on, or maybe even want to partner with you on a project in the future. You can reach me through my Facebook page, actually. Um, that's pretty much the best way to, to find me. My, my art is up there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Lynn, um, so, and people would just find you with Lynn Smith, just L-E-N, and then S-M-I-T-H, right? Yes. Awesome. Okay. And uh, Lynn, what kind of advice would you have to somebody? Maybe they're looking at getting into this world of animation. Uh, maybe they've always uh, been the kind of person that loves to draw in, in class and not pay attention, or <laughs> maybe they just love it uh, you know, so much that they do it all the time. What is some advice for those young people that might be looking at getting into this world of animation and uh, kind of breaking into it? I try to be as lucky as I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh well you know and sometimes it is all about the the right time right place and uh you know um you can have the skill but sometimes it's just having it discovered you know so well that's that's the other thing is just don't take no for an answer um there's a lot of studios out there and there's a lot of opportunities so don't quit don't quit i love it don't don't quit. Well, Lynn, I have one final question for you today, and we will wrap this interview up. The question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Just have fun. Have you know, have as much fun as you can. Um, my life's been a cartoon, so um, <laughs> I love don't, it. Don't take don't take things too seriously. I love it. I love it. Have fun and then, and, and just go for it. Just do it. <laughs> um, enjoy the ride. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. I love it, Lynn. That's so wonderful. Well, Lynn, thank you so very much for your time. It's been wonderful to dive into some of these amazing projects and to get some inside scope and scoop into them. Um, and to know some of the different characters you've gotten to work on along with the amazing projects that they accumulate into. Uh, so thank you very much for your time today, Lynn. Thank you, Trent. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Well, Lynn, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Would you please give us a closeout as we wrap up our episode? Yeah, this is Lynn Smith, designer of Kick Cloud Kicker and Bonkers in Toontown. And uh, I've enjoyed our talk. Thanks for having me on uh, Who Did That Voice? Well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Lynn Smith, the character designer and animator. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice? I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next time for our special guest, Jerry Plunkett, the voice of Scarab from Mummies Alive. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they've voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice. <laughs>